Um, Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. That was the main event last night um, with the uh, Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. Yep. Uh, there is a lot, I think, about this uh, whole situation. So in the interest of being fair to the listener, who my responsibility is to, I'm just going to give it to you everything that I think about this or whatever, because there there's a situation with the... You know, the injury, the match, um, the politics behind this whole thing, the the comparisons, like what, you know, he was doing in AEW uh, before that, what this does for him in storyline, out of storyline, um, the type of injury it is. So I so he has a torn pectoral muscle. Um, people are thinking he's out six months puts him right in line to come back. We'll get to that a little bit later. But um, when I hear pectoral tear in wrestling, historically, this is a steroid injury. Um, And I don't care whether Cody does steroids or not. I don't care whether any wrestler does steroids or not personally. That's their choice. That's their prerogative or whatever. But it is interesting. James brought up the the matches for MJF uh, earlier. Forty nine. Cody was on that same schedule pretty much over over the last couple years. Uh, very light schedule, maybe like thirteen matches in a in a given year, things like that. And then I think it was I think it was more than MJF was though. I think it's just slightly. So like I, I would challenge you to look okay. it up. Like maybe okay. maybe in the fifties. Um, but with him, like, you know, that that is a steroid injury. You think about Triple H. You think about John Cena. John Cena's thing is notoriously that he's clean. I don't know how much stock to put in that, but that's just historically what it is. When we see quads or pecs, uh, and I was just like, you know, I, I looked at Cody when he faced Sammy Guevara in that ladder match. I looked at him at WrestleMania. And I looked at him yesterday or, you know, before this show. And he's noticeably bigger, um, I would say. Not He's not like, you know, it's not like night and day or anything. But it's like, all right, maybe he was what? You know, maybe he was like 215 in AEW. Maybe he's like 230, 228 or something. And he's just a little bit more cock diesel or whatever, which is cool or whatever. Um, because obviously, you know, WWE is the size promotion. And then, you know, you start thinking about jumping back into uh, that grind, essentially, of, you know, <laughs> wrestling Seth Rollins on 20 house shows, essentially. Um, he supposedly got injured in that brawl um, with a partial torn pec, and then he tore the shit off the bone in a gym where he was lifting afterwards. So, um, it is, you know, a lot to think about. When you think about the pressure that was on him people were wondering why he did this uh, because it was like wow you're real like this isn't working i'll talk about it later like this isn't just working through uh being hurt this is an injury like this is th- these are two totally different things right um this is cody's first ever pay-per-view main event i believe as a single ever in wwe yeah ever like, like, it, or, you know, anything not Ring of Honor, like, or whatever. He never did an AW. I don't think he was going to miss this, obviously, for any reason. Um, you think about where they were at. They were in Chicago. Cody's had lots of big moments in Chicago over the, you know, past couple years. Um, that was the main event of the show. There wasn't a whole else, lot else on that show. And this is this bizarre pressure that I think guys feel, and Cody's no no different here, where he wants to live up to that. Like, he was like, yo, we're the main event for this, and, like, we're going to do it. And they had a sold-out audience, and they're not selling out like that in every city. It's not a guarantee. Like, they're fighting uphill in Chicago. So Also, like, his face is all over the poster. Like, his face is on, like, the, the uh, commemorative ch- uh, folding chairs at, at ringside and all that. Like, this was, like about him right. finally in right. that way in WWE. And um I think, you know, depending on we we've seen Vince look at different guys getting hurt and for some guys it doesn't matter. You're still his guy, right? 
and then other people it's like well can't ever trust that motherfucker again so if he didn't make this match who knows what side of the fence he would end up on now that he did make this match again who knows what side of the fence he's on with Vince still right but I would think that he had to have bought himself something um and ironically I think accidentally it is the best thing to happen to him going forward because after the Seth Rollins program that was done, he beat Seth Rollins with one arm, LOL Seth Rollins, um, <laughs> you know, come out here and do all this cap. And I have a question for your ardent hardcore WWE fan that actually bought into all the stuff Seth Rollins was talking about. Um, and then watching Cody come in from AEW beat that man three times in a row on pay-per-view. I just want to know, like D'Angelo, how does it feel? Um, they, <laughs> but back to the part about it being the best thing to happen to him. They don't get, like, chances are they fuck it up anyway, right? That's just, just what it is, right? But yeah, you delay that. You don't have to wrestle through SummerSlam season where you're still not anywhere near the belt. You don't have you to avoid go through, football season. You don't have to go through football season and the ratings at, at any point. You get to be looked at as a savior. Come, you know, when, when it comes back around for January and the Royal Rumble, and you're instantly programmed in. Like you kept this 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 program with Seth Rollins, which I would put as a 100% success. Like for Cody, if you're looking at it right, you walk in. You live up to the billing. You have this awesome feud with Seth. There were small things I didn't like about it, but overall, like this is probably the best booked and executed thing out of WWE I can think of for a very long time, right? Oh, the main roster? I mean, yes. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, maybe AJ? Maybe AJ's first like seven months in the company, maybe? Maybe. Like, go from Jericho to Reigns to Cena? Maybe? Maybe. Um, and I know people are, like, probably, you know, if you're hearing this and you're like, what about Roman Reigns and the never-ending title reign? I'm like, I, I guess, that thing I guess lost you... steam, like, a year ago. Like, we're yeah, 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 yeah. And also, like, um, I think there's also, maybe you could say something for, like, maybe Rollins, maybe, you know, on purpose, playing stuff like maybe you could say something about like Seth Rollins in 2018 from the gauntlet to when the IC belt maybe mm -hmm. but it's been you know with you know it's been so few and far between and then immediately they were like yeah let's let's put him a break quiet yeah. <laughs> boy but um he avoids all that he comes back in it's possibly a savior next year when it's actually time to like make the money or whatever and then if you're looking at it you gotta put him with Roman Reigns um once you once you get past all that and he skirts around a lot of it this is a jeff jarrett like win like <laughs> this this is this is this is genius in a way he gets he get, he gets his big salary um he gets his young daughter he still gets to hang out with he goes home for six months you can only hope that they don't fuck it up where they're doing like um these satellites with cody or whatever um and you know and make people sick of them or whatever because i think you know james there were two wrestlers that we said would be main eventers in wwe about 10 years ago one of them we still get, got correct like like he's i think he's made now is what is basically uh, what i'm saying in wwe he's made yeah i think i think he definitely gets fox little points for that where people you know or becomes one of the guy gets in the inner circle of guys that vince trust at the top of the card you know, like when you have like Orton and Roman and AJ and uh, Danielson when he was around, still. Um, yeah, he, he he. I think this definitely vaults him into that category. Like, because I mean, it was. I I haven't seen the match, but like looking at the pictures, uh, like I'm glad you watched the match because like oh, for we me, we're gonna get into that for a second. Yeah. Or okay. Well, let that. me get out the way. Let me go ahead. Go ahead. Continue with your thoughts. Yeah. So like, well, I want to get to take one more detour detour because some of that seeped into the discourse yesterday of course we had um we had a lot of fan, fans of japanese wrestling that were upset with dave talking about it being one of the most compelling matches in history they were like oh are you gonna not rate this one because it's so dangerous and uh because obviously this is dangerous like and it is funny like you know wwe does tout itself as 
the safe company. Uh, their fans tout themselves as, you know, this is the safe promotion. These are where, you know, it, the wrestlers don't get hurt. They don't allow, you know, these things, but they allow this thing, which is a fair point, I feel like. Um, like, people were upset, like, hey, Dave, you need to uh, not rate this one like you didn't rate Naito and Ibushi um, <laughs> from 2019. Um, then I saw people that, that were wishing that people would keep the same energy with uh, we, we, they didn't hear people protesting that Kenny Omega shouldn't wrestle um, while he was working through all his injuries um, over the past, you know, couple couple years and all that. But I think those are unfair comparisons to both of them. Um, like w- with Kenny, in a sense, he was also trying to hold something together, like being a long running angle that he was paying off at the end of it. And then if he gets worked on at any point before that in the promotion, he was the one constant that had never gone away at that point up until he dropped the belt. If he's not around and gets fixed and he's taking this amount of time off within that three-year period, maybe this is a different promotion today. Who knows? But the the thing with Kenny was he, I feel like there's a difference between hurt and injured, and he pretty much could still do his level of performance still you know, and the, the the vertigo stuff, like, that's stuff that doesn't go away. Like, it's like, he would, you're asking him to basically retire from wrestling. Um, and I think in Cody's case, this wasn't a case of where he's aware of all these injuries. Like, yo, I'm coming in here and I'm fucked up. But, like, I'm about to soldier on or whatever. This was like, a, he had a week or less uh, to make this decision, right? And then think about all the stuff we talked about before, the pressure that he was under. I feel like that's it's a, almost an insult to both of them to try to like pit them against each other like this. Like, I feel like these are two totally different scenarios with guys that are, um, that have like, you know, they have their own view. They're both tough as hell for one. And they're both like, um, like in, I think completely different situations. Like Kenny's not having to prove himself. Like he's he's doing something else. Cody's like in a almost in a prove it situation still. I think in WWE, um, that they they both have pressure, but the pressures are different. Like Cody is pressured to, to get to the mountaintop, whereas Omega is is pressured towards like if this shit goes down, what happens to like me and my friends? Um, I I. I and also, so, like, nobody so, knew how bad it was until it was done. Like, <laughs> like we didn't hear uh, all the constant complaining. Like, the only thing we would say, oh, yeah, man, he's, like, he's cupping. He's doing all this other stuff. But nobody knew yeah. he's rested a hernia, vertigo for years. Like, nobody knew yeah. this stuff or whatever. Yeah. Like, everybody like, knew the Cody thing. Like, like that's why like, the reactions th- are different, I think. Yeah, like, thinking about the Omega interview about talking about all his injuries, um, Go just thinking about going just in my mind going over like I remember him talking about how uh, Okada hit with a drop kick and then he go kind of landed on him after because you know Okada goes like fifteen feet in the air and then falls down on you uh, and falls down he ended up falling down on Okada's on Omega's head and Omega uh, said he woke up the next day and had you know whatever and then I think that was when he had to go do the Naito uh, the final right so. Um, she won final. That's when he was like, oh shit, like the room spinning. But I don't recall him saying that like it's the same level of, you know, of it's the same level of of jarring at as like at, at all times if it modulates or whatever else. He just says he still has it, which is like, I mean everybody bouts of vertigo is different, right? Like it, 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 it was stress or whatever else he could act in different ways. Like, so I don't know if his room's always spinning on him. He didn't really say it in that way, or he said the room spins, but it's not, sometimes he can manage it. Sometimes he can't. Um, so whatever. Uh, so I, I, I get why people say in this danger, because obviously it is, it's like, you wouldn't let someone, you wouldn't let someone, I wouldn't, if I had vertical, I wouldn't get behind a wheel and drive. Right. Um, but, we look at Cody's situation. The Cody situation is seemingly a pain tolerance thing, right? And um, I gotta say, there's a guy that wears a lot of red, white, blue, and gold. Is working WWE. We've seen dudes that have all types of torn muscle in, in uh, situations in WWE. 
uh, get on one and get, you know, get them an ox or get them a perk and then, and then handle it and then go from there. I'm not saying that shit wasn't super painful. There's a reason why you take those opioids to begin with. Uh, but, um, he soldiered through the best way he knew how, and uh, most you can do is commend him for it. Would you want all your wrestlers to do that? No, because that's, that'd be dumb. But put in, in that situation, he decided to, to, to go for it, and he and he came through successful. So all I can do is salute him for it. Um, so as far as the match, like um, I now I think this is a master class in you know, <laughs> like this is one what? thing. Also, it what also helps Cody is I don't know why people keep missing this. The same thing when he got strapped by MJF and Wardlow. He's anemic. Everything on him looks worse than it actually is. Not to say that a torn peck isn't some big fucking deal. Nah. You go out there and tore, tear a peck uh tomorrow and see if your ass ain't in the ER. Yeah. Like and he- see if your ass ain't getting reconstructive surgery and all that kind of stuff and your hospital bills are through the roof. No, it's a serious thing. Uh, he is lucky. He is lucky to be in a position to where he can take care of it, and if it need be, he could take his ass to Birmingham and get his and get his shit done by someone like Doctor James Andrews and do all the rehab and all that kind of stuff. And it was interesting thinking about it for me was like, see, this is why you, you don't leave AEW if need be, or lucky A. You know, WWE covers all the nurses' bill, but like. Wrestlers bills when they're still in the company, but like I was thinking to myself, like, can you imagine like having having health insurance, and then you leave, and then you leave health insurance to, and then you tear Do a that, that has to suck. Like, luckily Cody's in, like I said, Cody's in the position that he's in. He's he's fortunate, all that kind of stuff. He's with a company that if he does, if something like this is gonna happen, Vince and them are gonna take care of that. So he ain't got to worry about that. But not everybody is not everybody leaves a is gonna leave AW and go to WWE. And and that's the part that where he's like, dude, that would suck if you were a weekend warrior. And mm-hmm. you like, bro, can you imagine if Tom Lawler tore a peck? How fucking awful that would be, bro. Or like, like when Dan Housen broke his leg uh, at, at, in the last year. Dickinson that with sucks. The hips. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and the match itself, like, it was a masterclass in like uh, subverting expectations, like as far as mm-hmm. with danger. And um, I think Rollins did a great job, like as far as the doing stuff like putting Cody on the table and making you think he was about to get slashed through the table, but Cody rolls off the table. Uh, different things like just working creative situations just to not avoid it, but protect him, essentially. And this thing was very dramatic. It was like the crowd was totally into it. Uh, I can't recommend watching the match enough. Um, I'm not like I am. I know some people are probably listening to this and be like, Hey, has rich been killed and cloned? But <laughs> like, my thing is I'm always like, I'm not a fan of Cody, like as a wrestler, but I'm going to be fair as I see it with him. Um, this was like a, this is a performance. I think that is going to buy him a lot of toughness points, if nothing else. Right. And for someone that already kind of already has that with the flaming table, People and all, that and, all, and too, you know, yeah. and, and you know, thumbtacks and all the other crazy shit he's done over the last, you know, three years or so to get people to love him. Mm-hmm. And, and like the the thing about Cody and WWE is like this is the environment where he can do it. Like he wasn't supposed to be the man elsewhere. He was supposed to be the man here. Like we saw this years ago, and it just didn't work for whatever reason. Um, so one nation radio always ahead. So, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I highly re- recommend the match just to check it out. Like, I don't think like at times it's slow and they're, they're like, um, kind of milking it. I, obviously like Cody's like, going go milk that shit. If there could be a more dramatic motherfucker, I don't know who it would be, um, that would, that would get as much as they can out of it. Um, and I think that, uh, that, like I don't think like I, I joked about Rollins like losing and being hurt like I don't think he's really hurt by this I think he actually mm-hmm. earned himself a lot in this yeah. too um, I think I think uh, Cody cut a promo on Raw and Rollins beat him up with a sledgehammer or beat him down with a sledgehammer so he got a little bit of heat back but you know whatever he Rollins is a made man whatever he does yeah so um, but yeah I would I would highly recommend you guys check this out just to look at the like when the crowd when he pulls the jacket off and he has the fucking 
you know, the arm and everything like that. Now, Purple, keep in mind, yeah. everything that I've said about this, like, is this probably a steroid injury? Possibly, right? But it almost doesn't matter. Like, just <laughs> like when you when you look at it, look at what happened. Like, and, yeah, and watch gross. him watch him tough it out. Like two minutes into the match, he does a fucking Cody cutter off the fucking second rope directly on the shit, and I'm like. This nigga's crazy, like, for one. like, Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, people have to remember, wrestlers are not, like, wrestlers are humans, right? I don't want to fuck that up, right? But they have different pain tolerances than everyone else. Um, This is totally Cody's decision. I don't think this is a thing where WWE was like, hey, you need to get your ass in there, or whatever. But could they have like kind of just looked the other way possibly i you know i think that's in play here uh especially with a guy that's as we mentioned all over the posters this is their big main event for this town they have a fucking depleted roster as it is uh if it was a one one night situation can you go i you know yeah, this guy was always gonna go right and and you know when people talk this is one thing I don't like, right? When people talk about football or talk about pro wrestling and talk about, you know, the difference between injured and hurt, and it's like, well, I get what you're trying to say, but people are still fucking working injured. I don't know what the hell y'all talking about. Uh, like, you know, whether it was, you know, you hear all the all these things from different people, all these weird nicks and, ne- nicks and scrapes from their encounters and stuff and, and things not properly healing because they're still doing this, whatever else. And, like, you think about, like, that time that Roman Reigns missed in 2014 that Tanya was talking about on Twitter where he's like, when he had the sports hernia, he was poking, pushing his testing back in but to where he finally got it taken care of because they had gotten that far gone. You think of like uh, 2018, I think, AJ Styles had a partially torn hamstring and wrestled on it all year. Like, there's stuff like that that just comes up. Like, look at, look at Omega, just beat the shit. Um, and, that, and like, at the top level... Osprey beat the shit the last two years. Obushi beat the shit. Like it's a uh, that you're going to be beat up. Like how, what Tanahashi wrestled on a on that torn uh, was biceps for how many how long how many months? Long time. Yeah, yeah. So like that's 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 just what it is. Uh, or I don't say this what it is, but like that's a part of this, and that's a part of it, of what of what the the greats that the ones that are really driven push themselves through and um there's always gonna be a part of any you know physical anything with physical contact Sam, this is, Matt is Jackson it is. had a bad back for years <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah i guess you can throw that in there too you're throwing bob you're throwing bob Orton in, in the arm too <laughs> uh so in the cast but uh yeah just uh that's you're there's, there's gonna be people that's gonna be beat up and injured and 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 hurting all the time and like you know like we've cleaned some of this stuff up with with uh with the drug use whatever else uh but like I wouldn't I wouldn't be naive I don't think any either one of us would be naive enough to pretend like oh that's completely gone or whatever else like there's a cost to this stuff yeah yeah um that's, that's all I really got on it but 